This video is sponsored by Factor. Most hydrofoils are inherently unstable and rely on some sort of electronic height sensor embedded in the hull of the vessel to measure the distance to the surface of the water. This signal gets processed through a computer and is used to adjust the angle of the hydrofoil to stabilize the craft. This is exactly how my little RC hydrofoil with sonar sensors worked. Electronic stabilization like this works great, but there is a much simpler and purely mechanical way to stabilize the height of a hydrofoil craft. If you look closely at these hydrofoil sailboats, you can see a wand dangling in the front that skims along the surface of the water. This wand is mechanically connected through a series of pushrods to a flap on the hydrofoil. This means that as the boat gets lower, the wand gets pushed up, which pushes the flap down, which makes the boat go up. It's a self-stabilizing system. Pretty clever. This ensures the boat will always be trying to maintain the same height above the surface of the water. I've always wondered if this sort of a thing would work for a ground effect vehicle. So in this video, I'm going to give it a try. My first test was with this tandem wing ground effect vehicle that I made last year. It never really flew that well in the first place, so if wand control works, you know it's good. I added this series of wires and popsicle sticks that change the angle of the flaps based on the position of the wire. On my first hand toss glide tests, this actually seems to work. It's clear the aircraft just kind of floats right above the ground. Now it's tough to say how much of this is the wands in action versus just the aircraft's natural tendency to stay in the ground effect. But to me, it does totally seem like the wands and flaps are doing most of the work here. It even seems like the system is too reactive because with too much airspeed, it would go unstable and start to oscillate. Since this aircraft, in theory, should not need any external roll and pitch inputs, I added an RC car motor, ESC, and receiver. I glued the steering servo directly onto the rudder for steering control. All these electronics weighed a lot, and I think it was also just super nose heavy. It was just kind of skimming across the ground and not really flying in most cases. And I didn't get the chance to test it all that much before it exploded on my tire. But whatever, that airframe was kind of a piece of crap anyways. Now on to the next test. We've got the trusty old flying sled ground effect vehicle here, and today we're going to try wand control for altitude. You can see how there's a mechanical linkage between this dangling wand and the elevons. Here's a close-up of the pushrod wand control system. The servos are still there, but they're not doing anything. Let's give it a try. Wow, yeah. Oh, it's overtuned. So the wands have too much control. It seems to work well at lower speeds. Like right there, that's flying. It's not touching the water, except for the wands. Whoa, whoa, it's getting a little squirrely. I keep trying to give it like little bits of elevator and aileron input, but <laughs> I have to remember there is no elevator or aileron control right now. It's just rudder only. Okay, let's try and adjust the tuning a little bit. So to reduce the gain of the feedback loop, I drilled a new hole down here and moved this control rod down a little bit so it has less throw. Reducing the elevon throw didn't seem to have any effect. It was still kind of going into bucking bronco mode with too much airspeed. The weird thing about this control scheme is that the wands are controlling the elevons to adjust the attitude of the aircraft, but in order to make the aircraft as a whole go up, the elevons have to push the tail down. So if you're only looking at the tail of the aircraft, then that makes this a positive feedback loop, or in other words, an unstable system. So now I've moved the control rod even further down so that now the elevons have very little throw. Oh, that's pretty smooth. Oh, nope, there it starts to wiggle again. It seems to work well if you keep the airspeed down. Once the airspeed gets too high, that's when it starts to oscillate. If you remember back to the first few videos of this ground effect vehicle, it uses pivoting motors in the front for par thrust. That's power augmented ram effect. It basically just blows air under the wing like a hovercraft and floats up off the water without using as much airspeed to get lift. The wands were causing the aircraft to oscillate when the airspeed got too high, so I was only really able to fly it with the motors at an upward angle for some par thrust. This allowed it to fly more slowly, but still break contact with the water. Oh! Since I can't move the push rods down anymore, I've now just started cutting the elevons down so that they're smaller. Let's give this a try. Yeah, if the airspeed gets too high, it still goes wonky. I kept cutting the elevons down more and more to detune the control loop, but the high speed oscillations would just not go away. So far, so good. And then it's bad. Eventually, they were just little slivers. Oh, still oscillating. Get out of the way, duck. 
Okay, that, there's got to be, this can't be an over-tuning problem. There's got to be just like something fundamentally wrong with the control scheme here. As any good scientist would, I did another test to act as a control to see if the oscillations were coming from somewhere other than the wands. To do this, I fully removed the wands so that the elevons were just left free hanging. Sure enough, removing the wands removed all the oscillations. I even tried getting the airspeed up as high as I could without just having it take off like a plane. Still no oscillation. What this means is that the wands were probably more of a hindrance than a help, probably due to the fact that they were causing a positive feedback loop in the rear of the vehicle and a negative feedback loop in the front. Kind of a weird combo. Whoa, <laughs> where did he come from? Also, I can't believe this is working as well as it is with zero elevons. There's zero pitch or roll control right now. And it works perfect, <laughs> that's so awesome. So after these tests, I decided that it would be better to have some sort of a wand device control the altitude from the front of the vehicle instead of the back. This way, it would be entirely a negative feedback loop or a self-stabilizing feedback loop. Since there are no control surfaces on the front, I decided to try and use the motor tilt angle to control the altitude of the aircraft instead. To do this, I attached two carbon rods to the motor pivot tube and put a little water ski on the front. The first time I tested this, the waves were too large and it did not work well at all. Then the motor pivot got stuck. After that, I brought it out on a calmer day, and this happened. The water ski was creating too much aerodynamic lift and it flew up. I added a hard stop to prevent it from rotating down too far, but not one for preventing it from rotating up. There was a slight breeze that was moving it across the lake, so I was hoping it would get blown all the way to the adjacent shore. It should be blowing this way. I just really don't want to go kayaking. <laughs> it's like 40 degrees. For a while it was looking hopeful, but then the wind direction shifted. Crap, now it's getting blown too far to the right. We're gonna end up in those boats over there. I should really just borrow that paddleboard right there. Whosoever it is, probably that person's. Eventually I was forced to go get the inflatable kayak once again. <sighs> yeah, we're off. When I'm busy building projects like this one, the last thing I want to spend time on is going to the grocery store. That's why I love Factor Meals. Get Factor and have delicious, dietitian approved meals shipped straight to your door. Check out this chickpea curry with asparagus. Mmm, that's really good. Or how about this cheesy chicken breast with zucchini and onion? This chorizo chili was also insanely good. And so is this jalapeno creamy chicken. Mmm. All you gotta do is choose your meals online, and a couple short days later, boom, they're there. Pop them in the microwave, and they are ready to eat in just two minutes. This really is the easiest way to eat well. With 34 chef-prepared weekly options, there's always something new to try. Plus, you can replenish your snack supply with an assortment of quick bites, smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add-ons. Stop wasting time and dealing with food the old-fashioned way. Get America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and start saving time, eating well, and keeping your fridge stocked with pure deliciousness. Head to factor75.com slash rctestflight50 and use code rctestflight50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Now back to the video. There it is in the corner over there. Wow, there's like a layer of pond scum right here. Remember in my Ram Effect vehicle video how I had a wedge-shaped wing to hopefully prevent it from generating any lift out of ground effects? Well, yeah, I made this thing wedge-shaped, so that should lead it to have zero aerodynamic angle of attack, but still have a positive angle of attack on the planing surface so that it can skim. So this worked pretty well. It was able to skim just barely above the surface of the water, and I was even able to give it full throttle without just taking off and gaining altitude like an airplane would. However, when we have a closer look at the onboard footage, it's clear the motors aren't really even moving at all, so I don't think this control system was really doing anything. Maybe playing with the angle of the water ski relative to the motors could have gotten it to fly higher, but unfortunately I never got around to it. Oh, I'm getting attacked! <laughs> Having a wand sticking out in the front like this is super sketchy anyways. It's just asking to get caught on something and nosedive into the water and rip the motors off. Not a great concept for a ground effect vehicle. No bread for you, duck. But it does clearly work for slower vehicles like hydrofoils. This Manta hydrofoil e-bike has a water ski hydroplane type of device in the front that rides along the surface of the water and adjusts the angle of attack of the larger hydrofoil underwater. Another example of a wand type device in the front is this presentation from a hydrofoil designer named Harry Larson. You can see the height sensor foil out front riding along the surface. Here's a look at this mechanism above water. Pretty nifty. For my next try at a wand controlled ground effect vehicle, I wanted something with a control surface in the front. This is so that we can avoid the positive feedback loop problem that we were seeing on the flying sled since it has the control surfaces in the back. 
I ended up using the RC Speedboat Ground Effect vehicle that I had made a few videos ago. I built the height control mechanism out of 3D printed parts and steel wire. This assembly got glued onto the canard of the Speedboat Ground Effect vehicle, and then I added a second canard that pivoted right behind the motors. You can see how the wand changes its angle of attack. The motor tilt servo was still active, but I did not have it mapped to the pitch output of the flight controller like I did before, so there was no electronic stabilization going at all, except for on the yaw axis. Par thrust was still going to be integral to get the nose up out of the water on takeoff, but I was just controlling that manually with a switch. The first test did not really work out so well. It was getting too much lift from the front and flipping up. From the onboard footage, you can see that the wand is just reacting a little bit too late to push the nose down. After that, I adjusted the position of the wand control linkage to give it more throw. That seemed to have some positive effect, but to me it still seemed like the nose was riding a little too high, and that would just cause it to flip up with enough airspeed. Ground effects vehicle! In order to make the canard react more at lower altitudes, I cut the wand down shorter. And I also adjusted the length of the control rod in between the canard and the wand to give the canard more of a negative pitch angle. I also cut a notch in the wand's hard stop here so that it can rotate further down and actually go past vertical. This is basically the equivalent of increasing the gain on the controller a ton. It's actually so high that it acts like a bang bang controller when the wand is near vertical, but then it gets more progressive as the wand comes up. You can see how the wand snaps forward when it comes out of the water, and then the canard deflects a ton. This seems to be super effective at keeping the nose down. Pretty dang cool if you ask me. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Totally works. You can just see the canards holding it down. They move a lot. They have a lot of throw. <laughs> And keep in mind that there is no electronic stabilization going on here at all, at least not on the pitch or roll axes. It's purely mechanical. I'll admit, it would be way cooler if the water propeller and rudder were not dragging in the water, and the entire aircraft, other than the wand, was airborne. But that's just not how this vehicle works, so maybe I'll have to revisit this concept again in the future with a vehicle that is purely airborne. Now some people might say that an altitude control system, such as a wand, is unnecessary on an aircraft because flying in the ground effect is a self-stabilizing feedback loop that causes the plane to want to maintain altitude. This is true in some cases, especially for larger aircraft, but for smaller aircraft or in turbulent air, an altitude control system is very nice to have if your goal is flying low. So that concludes my experiments with wand control for ground effect vehicles. I think if I revisit this concept and design an airframe specifically for wand control, I could get it to work really well. But all these experiments were pretty janky and not very well thought out. Although this goes to show that wand control does work on aircraft, I don't think it's the ideal application. They're probably much more suitable for lower speed vehicles like hydrofoils. Anything hanging down off an aircraft is going to create a lot of drag. So an electronic height sensor like LiDAR or sonar is probably better. In these slow-mo shots, you can see how much the wand is disturbing the surface of the water. This takes a lot of energy to do, and it creates a lot of drag. A better wand planing surface could probably improve this, but it's still a lot of drag for something going really fast. So that's it for the wand stuff. Now here's some bonus footage from a ground effect concept that I wanted to try out on the flying sled. One thing I noticed from watching all these telephoto zoom lens shots is that there seems to be more downwash hitting the water right underneath the pontoons. You can see this in the wake from the downwash hitting the surface of the water. So why is this? The most logical explanation is that the front surfaces of the pontoons are just deflecting air downwards at a steeper angle than the rest of the wing. And these two little streams of downwash create the wake we're seeing. As the downwash hits the water, it compresses. And that compression is part of the reason why the ground effect causes an increase in lift. So I decided to try bridging the gap in between the two pontoons to create one big monopontoon. This would increase the amount of compression happening right under the center of gravity, which seemed like it would increase the potency of the ground effect. The lift from ground effect increases exponentially the closer you get to the water, so having more of the pontoon edge right down there next to the surface of the water should cause much more of a negative feedback loop and cause the aircraft to want to hug the surface of the water without touching it. So how did it work? Well, obviously not bad. This was a nice calm day, and you can clearly see how the downwash wake on the water's surface is no longer showing up exclusively under the pontoons. It's now more evenly distributed out over the whole monopontoon. Although, it does appear that there's some downwash from the motors showing up on the water, since I had to fly with them tilted up quite a bit for par thrust, since the pontoon seemed to reduce lift on the wing. 
Another thing that I think was happening was that the aircraft was having to fly at a steeper angle of attack. My hypothesis here is that if the pontoon's step is super low to the water, then it's probably just stealing all the lift that the trailing edge would have been getting. All the ram effect lift is happening up front and the trailing edge is suffocated. So in order to fly, it needed to pitch up higher to distribute the ram compression along the whole bottom of the wing. So yeah, not ideal, but it's definitely not terrible. Another thing to consider is how the entire aircraft is kind of shaped like a triangular airfoil, but upside down. So maybe that's creating negative lift, which means the aircraft has to pitch up more to compensate. So all in all, I would say this idea of trying to localize all the ram effect compression towards the front of the vehicle is probably a fail. Would not recommend to a friend. All just more data for your mental model. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.